Hello everyone, welcome back to ESL Chef. I am MNB Achari, your host here. So this is, unlike any of my videos, a, a completely different video. In this video, I want to talk about something that people do not usually talk about. Of course, they talk about these things in their personal lives, but they do not really put their ideas online so that other people uh, do that. Of course, even if there are uh, a few people who do that, actually we can count them on our fingers. Now, there are very few. Okay, uh, let me come to the point. So let me speak my mind in this video. Before we dive into the details, uh, if you have not subscribed to the channel, please do that and hit that like button because you are going to love this video. I have more questions than answers in this, uh, in this video. So please bear with me. Uh, the first question is, what is the purpose of a school? Or what is the aim of a school? It can be any school. So what is the main aim? Or what should be the main aim of an institute like that? Well, the main aim is to actually provide a platform where students can learn something that is going to be beneficial uh, in their future. So in fact, uh, to sum up, we can say that the students should be trained in such a way that they can become good citizens and serve their nation in one way or the other. They may not necessarily become uh, soldiers, but they can help the country grow in some way or the other. That's it. But th that is the aim. But what is the reality here? The reality is totally different. I don't say that uh, every school does that, but uh, most of the schools are like this. The reality is very different from what the society expects of them, I mean of the schools. Well, if you look at what experts suggest and what really happens in schools, there is a big gap. A gap that uh, does not seem to get filled easily or get bridged easily. So let's see why. The first thing is that, I mean, it's all about questions I said. Okay, the question is, so why do most schools encourage rote learning, R-O-T-E, rote learning, which is not at all recommended? Experts say something differently, and then what happens really in schools is, is completely different. It's all about rote learning. You know, they, they, they just try to mug up everything and then uh, uh, try to uh, fill their brains with this unnecessary stuff. I say unnecessary stuff because... When a child is not ready to learn something, when a child is not interested in learning something, and you try to uh, force the child to learn something, or to learn that thing, that is unnecessary for the child. And do you think it is necessary for the teachers who are doing this? No. They do that only because they need to get some bucks at the end of the month. They need to get some salary at the month. Because they, they have to make a living by doing something. So at the same time, let me tell you that I'm not criticizing everyone or everything here. There is certainly some uh, good side to this one. No doubt about this. But I'm talking about this because there is more bad side to this now. It's, a, actually, it's actually a burning question. See, let's get back to the point I was talking about earlier. If a child is not ready, or rather... If a teacher does not get a child ready to learn something and then the teacher tries to force things on the child, how can a child show interest and learn something? In fact, anything. It doesn't happen. And uh, let, let me also talk about another point. You know, what happens in schools is that they have a fixed curriculum most of the time. They have fixed curriculum and they make the children go through the curriculum. So whether they are ready or not, they don't bother about it. So period after period, I mean, every 45 minutes, every one hour, there is a new teacher. And uh, you know, the, the, the students have to be sitting like robots in the same classroom, just getting up to wish the teacher and then saying goodbye when the teacher leaves the classroom. Mostly, these are the only two occasions where students get a chance to uh, actually stretch their bodies a bit. Maybe in the name of uh, wishing the teacher or saying goodbye to the teacher. So, uh, again, there are some schools which give importance to the physical activity as well. 
but that's not that's not a lot when you compare that to what really happens in terms of academics in terms of learning and people always talk about this one there are four important skills listening speaking reading and writing and in schools they just give importance to the last two reading and writing read put everything here and then there is going to be a test write everything there and i always wonder why students fail to recall what they learned in the previous year like if i ask a ninth class student whether he or she is ready to take the test that uh, they took last year i mean the final exam last year so i ask them okay how many marks did you score last time in the final exam uh, they say okay i got 92 marks out of 100 okay now so I'm going to give you the same question paper now. Now, is it possible for you to score um, uh, 92, if not more than that? Actually, with that experience the student has got now, because uh, he took the exam some six months ago or five months ago, now after five months, the student should have got even better. And considering that, the student should get more than 92 now with the same question paper. But do you think the students are really confident they say one thing here when you ask them to take the test again they would say this one okay let me quickly go through that uh, syllabus one more time why do they need to do that we don't forget our names we don't forget the make of our television we don't forget the make of our mobile phones we say that's Nokia that's Samsung that's Apple we say like this we never forget those things okay let's move further and then talk more on this I have another question why are there more tests than the number of weeks that a student attends? It's really interesting and ridiculous to know that uh, a 10th class student who is going to appear for board exam, you know, takes, takes more tests than the number of weeks that he attends the school in the final year. Really, there are uh, weekly assignments, daily assignments, monthly assignments revision tests and then grand revision test and then finally pre-final and then if there is some some gap between uh, the pre-final exam and the final exam there is going to be another test where is time for the child to uh, recap the things where is the time for the children to uh, go back and look at the syllabus that they have covered and how can they know uh, if they have uh, done very well or not of course, you say that there is evaluation. Okay, evaluation process is there. I mean, teachers spend hours doing that evaluation. I understand that. But where is the time for the child to uh, review those mistakes and learn something? Now, are we really spending time on uh, a recapitulation? Or you call it remedial teaching? I think remedial teaching is more important than anything there. I think instead of giving a test again, immediately after another test, I think uh, schools should think of uh, uh, giving them remedial teaching so that they can be uh, thorough with, the, with, the, with this particular syllabus and then get ready for the next one. I think that is one of the reasons why children are losing interest. There's no doubt about this. In the 20 years of my teaching career, that's what I've noticed. Before children are ready, we give them a test. And actually, See what happens if you are not ready. It's like asking someone who doesn't know cycling to go for a cycle race. They are not simply ready. How can you give them tests? And what is the purpose? And it does not just stop there. After the examination, there is evaluation and the teacher goes there and then there is, uh, there is a lot of humiliation. Of course, again, let me tell you that there are some teachers who really encourage students who understand but uh, but but does that really happen all the time it doesn't my another question is why is this unnecessary hype that is created around board exams there is this cce continuous and comprehensive evaluation people are proud i mean um, especially these two states of Andhra and Telangana, people are proud that they have this CCE which was introduced some five to six years ago. And so do you think it is being implemented properly? So continuous and comprehensive evaluation. And is this really happening? And if this really happens, 
at uh, actually mid school level, sixth, seventh, eighth class, and then higher classes, eighth, ninth, tenth, higher classes. Why do we have a problem in tenth class? Why is it that some students do not know anything? I mean, the basic details of uh, rudimentary details of uh, uh, their syllabus are why? Why is it that they do not have the basic knowledge of of something there, something that they are studying? I think there are some other reasons as well. Uh, it's I know unhealthy competition, unhealthy competition among the students, and that actually um, actually d discourages some children who are not really uh, capable of uh, studying uh, very quickly or grabbing things very quickly. And what about those people? Those people have to be dealt with separately. So sometimes I feel that uh, it should be like one-to-one um, -one teaching rather than one to 40 or 50. How can a teacher take care of those 40 students? I, I, I understand you say that uh, uh, the teacher is very effective and he has got good methodology, he has got everything, but unless the teacher focuses on the, the particular problems of the individual students, how, how, how is there a scope for uh, the, the development for the improvement? And the final point I want to talk about in this video is ignorance of parents. Yes, ignorance of parents because they think that marks and grades are, are, are the things that decide the ability of uh, their children. If it is true, why is it that people who do not have good grades and marks are able to get better jobs than the other people who really got good grades? Of course, there are a few situations where, um, you know, they, they look at your uh, board exam certificate and then uh, they give you a job based on that, but that occurrence is very limited. Recent study uh, also revealed that uh, job seekers, people who are trying to get a job, do not have uh, enough competency. No, not enough competency. And they do not have even basic, I mean, rudimentary uh, communication skills and why is this happening okay I said that there are more questions than answers okay I want you to uh, reflect on the questions that I have asked because some of you might be having these same questions in your mind and please post your answers or please post whatever you think in the comment section thank you very much for watching I'll see you in my next video